Hello and welcome to this Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge. I was getting a little irritated. I was trying to feed it through uh, Internet Explorer and it just would not open. Internet Explorer is so NASA Mercury program. It's like 1967 technology, honestly. Uh, I think if you watch the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, it's more modern than Internet Explorer, honestly. Okay, but we have problems with Google. We have problems with Google, problems like um, audio issues that I notice people have across the board. So they can't say it's me anymore. Um, plugin issues where certain platforms won't work on it. So I would say their technology is not that great. It used to work when it was old tech, so they updated it and it stopped working right. So that wasn't so good. Not that great. It used to work when it was old tech, so they all right, sound like the audio is all right. We'll see. It'll probably deteriorate. I've, I've got, and I was planning to do this Tuesday, but I had some time. I still have to go through the college football stuff, but I was doing, I did all the major league baseball. Evan Williams, well, let me go older to newer. Ancient age from 1936, even though the company says 1946. I know they're wrong, and I sent them an email about that. I, I sent them proof of how they were wrong. No big deal. I mean, I'm sure almost no one cares what year this came out. The recipe is not the same anyway. It used to be stronger, but this thing is sold in different different uh, configurations. All right. There's ancient age, then there's ancient age, and then there's ancient age, and then there's ancient age. <laughs> Andrew Glump says, "Oh, I love Evan Williams Black Label, Best Value Bourbon. Has a great flavor, but it's cheap. I haven't tried the Green Label. Yeah, the Green Label is good." I'm, I've only had a tiny little slip of the black label. It seemed fine to me, but I need to really get into the black label in a few weeks. And thanks for watching, by the way. Uh, ancient age. So um, this is the most common one. This is the 80 proof. Age three years, sour mash, Kentucky whiskey from Kentucky. It's distilled, aged, and bottled in Kentucky. It's not one of those that's brought in. You can always tell by the label if it's brought in from another state. It's not by what they say, it's by what they don't say. If you go to Kentucky and other parts of the country, you can get a 90 proof, ancient age 90 proof. Not mentioned on the website, but it's there. Uh, you can get the ancient age 10 star, which is age six years. Um, that is mentioned on the website and some places sell it. We don't get it around here. I called the company. They said, no, they don't sell it in Louisiana. Another one that you can get in Louisiana is the Ancient Age Preferred Blended Whiskey. And it's got a red and black label instead of the red and, what is that color? Ivory, red and ivory label. Uh, that's not on the website. It might be in their product list, like uh, just like Heaven Hill. This is Heaven Hills, Evan Williams, green label bourbon introduced in 1955. This is 80 proof, aged three years also, uh, distilled, aged and bottled in Kentucky. But this is charcoal filtered, whereas the black label does not indicate charcoal filtering. But on the other hand, the black label is 86 proof instead of 80 proof. Okay. Uh, I would have started about like I said, about four minutes earlier, but the Internet Explorer would not open. And I, I run into that all the time with problems with that, with that browser. They talk about on their television commercials, you need to get Internet Explorer because it doesn't have lag. Aren't you sick of lag? I'm like, wow, look who's talking. That's why everybody uses Google, Chrome, and Firefox because that's all Internet Explorer does, or Microsoft Edge, as it's called today. That's all it does is lag. So it's ironic that they would put that. All right. The appearance. Well, it's golden, clear. They look the same. One is Heaven Hill of Bardstown, Kentucky. And like I said, 
One is ancient age, Sazerac slash Buffalo Trace of Frankfort, Kentucky. And I went to the Buffalo Trace, formerly Shinley, an old brand Shinley. They renamed it Buffalo Trace in 92. Uh, I went to their distillery earlier in 2017, and it was fascinating. They have these huge barrel houses everywhere right next to the river. And the guy said, the tour guide, he was okay. Too folksy, like fake folksy, you know what I mean? But no big deal. That's common on these tours. Not too many of them are necessarily authentic. Authentic personalities. Some are, like the Barton Distillery in Bardstown was. The girl was authentic. She wasn't putting on a shoe, which I appreciated. Uh, but the guy was saying, you know what's in a lot of these barrels? And I was thinking, probably ancient age since it's cheap. He said, ancient age. And I'm thinking, yeah, because it's probably one of your highest volume products. It's low priced. Of course, they have very expensive products, but then the volume drops. People don't buy it. Ancient age is like a cheap bourbon, right? So people buy a lot. <laughs> um, he said, I like that. I like that bourbon. I'm glad he didn't say on the tour, I hate that garbage. You know, he works for the company. Um, how much did you pay for the bottles? The green label, same price. Oh, yeah, uh, I bought the bottles in Kentucky. Because I never saw these 375 milliliter green labels around here. We get the other sizes around here. Uh, it was like, um, I think it was like $4, and then the black label was $5, something like that. I threw my receipts away, but it was cheap, you know. Do you still work at that store you used to buy all your beer at? Yes, I do. Watching from Tallahassee, Florida. Hello, Skylar Fuller. Beavis Chaka says, Ronald, all you need to review now is the Johnny Walker Green Label. Yeah, that and about a thousand other things. Harold Carmen says, turn the light on. If I turn the light on, that's going to ruin the whole Dawn Busters thing, though. The whole purpose is it's dark. And then we do the taste challenge and the light from outside slowly comes in. Don't you like seeing the sun come up? Clear sky, not a cloud in the sky. I can't ruin the effect. That would defeat the purpose of Dawn Busters. Let me check the audio. Taste challenge and the light from outside. Okay. I knew it's going to deteriorate unless Google finally fixed their problem. But I know they didn't. Okay. Well, I've blabbed enough and I mixed them up enough. I don't know which is which, I don't think. <clears throat> I don't know. Did I put more Evan Williams in there? No, that's more ancient age, huh? Sure is what I know. All right, better mix again. Okay, well, so anyway, the price point on these two is the same. Ancient Age is ten ninety nine for the seven hundred fifty milliliter bottle, and the Evan Williams is ten ninety nine around here. Around here. Uh, seems like in Louisiana the Green Label is more popular because I see more of it in the stores. Uh, you know, Louisiana is one of the poorer states for a number of factors. It's not even that big. I mean, we only have about 4 million people. We got as many people in Houston, Texas, as we got in our whole state, pretty much. Uh, so the green label is very popular around here. The black label, of course, everybody sells it. And then the bottled and bond and all the other variants, the flavor, the peach and all that. So Evan Williams is like a major brand in Louisiana. But on the other hand, it's a major brand in every state and all over the world. We're talking about one of the top selling bourbon brands on the planet. <laughs> Ain't Evan Williams, Ancient Age is one of those little niche brands. Some people buy it. Probably most people never heard of it. <laughs> Although it's been around for 80 years, you know what I mean? Yes, I love watching the sun come up as I have my morning drink as well. Oh, good. I drank three cups of coffee already. Skylar says, seem like your store gets all the good beers. Oh, they don't get all of them, but they get a lot of them. It's not really that big of a store. And, um, it's like a medium-sized grocery store. So they could get 
much more, but then what's the point if you can't sell it? So they have to moderate. They just sort of like say, well, let's get these. Then we'll wait and see what else comes in. It's no problem because you can just ask them. They'll order it and it'll come in. I mean, same thing with liquor. They didn't sell Beams 8 Star. And I didn't want to buy the big plastic jug. So I was like, man, I wish I could get Beams 8 Star. Uh, yeah, I mean, they got it for me in two days. No extra charge. Same thing with the uh, Taka uh, Gin. There was one store in Kenner that sold Taka Gin in the big plastic jug. I said, I don't want that. I want the glass bottle. Oh, I couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. Talked to the manager of Mathurin. She said, I'm going to call Republic National. The next day, <laughs> the next day it came in and it was not any more than I would have paid if I had found it on the shelf. So see, I, that, that's what's good about that store. You can just order and it'll come in. Well, that might be a lot of stores, but I don't know. I got a feeling when Dixie would just say, we don't have it. You know, like, buzz off. That's my feeling. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't. I don't think Winn-Dixie is going to call a distributor for you. I'm getting it in my nose. Okay. I think this is going to be a tough challenge because uh, these two are similar. Even though the ancient age is not charcoal filtered. Uh, yeah, these companies like to brag on that or like tout it. Maybe not brag, but tout it like charcoal filtered. Okay. But then... I got it mixed up with Kentucky Gentleman. Didn't seem to make a difference. So that could be more hype than reality, right? Like the uh, old English 800 malt liquor used to be charcoal filtered. Boy, they made sure they put that on the label. Did seem to be different, though, back then, a little better. But that could just be in, in my head. I don't mean that. It just could be you thinking that, you know? Harold Carmen says, how old are you? <laughs> you don't ask a woman how old she is. Oh, wait, I'm a man. Um, 49. Who was the cutie in the last video? My daughter. Okay. She likes to do beer and beer, wine and liquor reviews. She's been doing that since she was 18. The first beer she ever reviewed with me was Shimei Redcap. I think the first beer she ever sampled in my presence at age 18 was, and that was at Volksfest, she tried the Spaten Optimator, which is what, nearly 8% alcohol, and she was guzzling it like it was water. I, I, I said, uh, she's going to be like a craft beer person because she's really into these more uh, gourmet styles, and as she was, she never did care much for the macro beers, although she said she... She hates Miller High Life the least. <laughs> Evan Williams is run by a beam. Do you know it's good, huh? Andrew Gomes. Yeah, that's right. The beam, part of the beam family, you know, a branch of the Jim Beam family has always, always been the master distillers at Heaven Hill. That's right. And just like the No family, N-O-E, and that. We have no's here in Louisiana, NOE. We even had a governor no. And a radio station that he started, WNOE, no. He, uh, yeah, they, they are a branch of the Beam family and they run Jim Beam Distilling. Bill McIntosh says, good morning, Ronald. Good morning, Bill. I wish you could have joined us for the Evan Williams Green Label, but I understand people are busy. But we got the Black Label coming up uh, in a few weeks, so you might want to join that. Harold Carmen, Carmen says, nice. I need to look more into the backlog then. Yeah. We've done a lot of videos. All right. And she was still recovering from her leg injury. You know, that's why she had that kind of like vacuum pack brace on her leg. All right. I'm, I'm ready to do this. I've I'm, I'm been smelling them. Okay. Woody, but not too Woody, but Woody. Don't get me started on Booker's bourbon. Best bourbon there is by the greatest distiller that ever lived. Booker's. I've heard of it, but I've never had it. This one is less woody, I'm going to tell you right now. The one on my left. All right, let's go with the taste. I 
I watch some of these reviews where they just down a shot. That's the way they do it. They don't taste it and sip it. They just do shots. And they, in their opinion, that's the way to uh, figure out if it's good or not. Uh, I'm not really into that, so I'm going to have to do it this way, which might not be the correct way. All right. That's kind of strange. The one on the right smelled woodier, but the one on the left tasted woodier. Which one's better? Um, well, I have to say it's a tie. There's no difference really as far as quality. So if you buy Ancient Age or you buy Evan Williams Green Label, uh, you're basically getting the same type thing. Should be fine. Same price. I mean, you're going to pay about $10.99 per bottle. Might get it on sale. You might get it on sale because I see the green label at Winn-Dixie sometimes for $9.99. And I see the, the, the ancient age on sale for $9.99. So you just got to, like, you can make, like, a catalog in your mind of similar bourbons or Irish whiskeys, or brandy, whatever you're drinking, you know, same thing with beer. And then you just kind of just like shop the sales at pages. You know, you get the newspaper or whatever, you just look at the sales. Or if you're just browsing in a store, I would say just hit the, the shop price because you're basically getting, you're not even making a trade off because you're not trading quality for price. You're just going, it's a lateral move. No need for three coffees. Shot of whiskey should wake you up the same, laugh out loud. No, I do need the three coffees. I, I drink those every day. I, I, people say, you're addicted to alcohol. No, I'm probably more addicted to coffee, I'm going to tell you the truth. If I don't drink coffee, my, like, my head hurts. I feel sick, like bad. If I don't drink coffee tomorrow, I feel, I feel bad. But if I don't drink, Alcohol, I don't feel bad. I don't feel sick, you know, like withdrawals or something. Uh, I think coffee is pretty addictive, but it's probably, to me, it's probably good for you, right? It's probably good to drink coffee. Not, I see some of these people at work, it's, it's not good what they're doing. They're like out of control with it. They drink coffee all day long. Like they must drink a gallon a day. They're putting all the sugar, like a, I see them pouring, pouring sugar and all that non-dairy creamer, which is a bunch of partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, solids. I'm thinking, wow, you're really excessive. You're taking something that could be okay, and you're going crazy with it. <laughs> I only put sugar in my first cup of coffee in just a little teaspoon. The second tube, I only put milk in there. So I don't understand. It's like alcohol, you know, people go crazy. Caffeine is more addictive than alcohol. I believe that. It's a stimulant. Alcohol is a depressant. See, so it's a different type of drug. I tried to explain that to people about drugs, but people are very hard-headed. They have like an ignorant D.A.R.E. program approach to drugs. You know, the D.A.R.E. program that they have in elementary school where they, like, make equivalencies. They almost present it as though heroin is the same level as cigarettes. You know, they, got, they, they confuse the children because they're thinking, well, heroin is a drug and my mama smokes cigarettes, so heroin must be equal to alcohol and marijuana. You know, this sort of ignoramic, it's almost you know, like it's designed to confuse children. Um, whoa. If you like the wood in bourbon, you would like these two. Now, I think that's why some people don't like bourbon. It's too woody. It's too gauche. You know what I mean? Bourbon is too gauche. It's too uh, strong in the flavor. In bourbon. Oh, good. The audio is still good, huh? Well, be, it'd be lovely if Google had solved that problem because it was like five months of hell dealing with it. 
you know, the Irish whiskey that I tried last the week before last that was still mild, you know. I said, whoa, that's a <coughs> big difference from bourbon, although it's the same ABV, same alcohol level, big difference. That Irish whiskey honestly reminded me more of American blended whiskeys. You know, like McCormick blended whiskey. And that's a whole different animal. In the mild, you know, or like Canadian, yeah, uh, like Canadian blended whiskey, like Canadian mist. Or the VO, Seagram's VO, something like that. I'd rather be addicted to coffee, better than alcohol for sure. Yeah, I agree with that. that Bill says audio is perfect, Ronald. Thanks, Bill, but it'll probably fall apart. Well, I'm going to make the call anyway, so it isn't going to matter because I'm going to I'm going to say which is which. I mean, I really actually I can't tell. <laughs> Sweetness, caramel, whiskey, vanilla, wood, you know, when I say whiskey, it tastes a commonly commonly associated with whiskey. Same here, but I, no, I'm starting to pick up more wood. This thing is breathing, and I'm getting more wood. I got more wood in the aroma, and I'm getting more wood in the taste. So I think that it's the ancient age, because I thought that the ancient age had a strong wood component, uh, like a charred wood, like really charred wood component. Now, that may or may not appeal to people. You see, some people would say, oh, that really tastes rich and good, and other people would say, oh, it's you know, get, it gags me, you know, whatever, but uh, I like it. I wouldn't like it every day, but I like it. You know, maybe I would prefer the, the lesser every day. All right, let's go. I'm going to say this is ancient age, but like I'm saying before I make the choice, I don't really know. And remember, I said the quality is the same, so there's no winners and losers here. You don't get kicked out the tournament if you tie. I mean, when we're buying stuff, a tie is as good as a win as far as I'm concerned. This is not a college football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's Evan Williams. <laughs> Harold Carmoon says, what do you do for a living? Oh, review alcohol, alcoholic beverages. <laughs> no, I don't do that for a living. I live to do that. No, um. Uh, I just work part time. I just work part time, Harold. I get a retirement check every month from the school board. Well, I mean, not the school board. <laughs> the state of Louisiana, state teachers retirement system of Louisiana. Andrew Glump says, well, I'll be, guess I'll have to pick up a bottle of ancient age, haven't tried it. I would highly recommend it, even though I couldn't tell one from the other. Hey, you know what? Maybe that's a good sign, right? That I couldn't tell them apart. I couldn't tell. <laughs> I couldn't tell Evan Williams from the Kentucky Gentleman, which is a dollar cheaper everywhere. That's a good, and that's a good mark for Kentucky Gentleman, right? And I could, and we we said it was dull in isolation. That we said it was dull when we were drinking it. Me and William Kepley, when we drank it in isolation. But when we when I did it in a contest. Um, I couldn't tell a book. So then I couldn't tell ancient age from Evan Wait, So what we're, what are, we're finding out, if you want to spend less than $10, or maybe, let's say, less than $11, okay. But it could be less than 10 if you luck up. You could buy ancient age or Evan Williams Green Label or Kentucky Gentleman and get a 750 milliliter bottle, and you might not pay more than $10 if you catch the sale. And I mean, I don't know what the taxes are in your state. Over here, it's just 10% sales tax, okay? So if it was $10, it's gonna be $11, even. You know what I'm saying? It'd be $10 for the bottle and 10% tax in this parish, this particular parish. Now I can go to other parishes where the sales tax is much lower, so it might be 1070. I just live in a parish that has a high sales tax because of an, an sort of incompetent parish government with a, a not very wise or intelligent voter base. The voting population isn't too particularly bright. It's like uh, the government saying, hey, 
you could cut your throat a little bit more if you like, and they say, oh, I'll do that. <laughs> Sometimes the disposable income isn't there, so cheaper bourbons definitely have a purpose, ha. Huh? Yeah, I think a lot of people have trouble with disposable income because a lot of people's expenses are almost as high as their income. So you may, that, and Americans are notorious for bad money management and budgeting. Notorious, they don't save, Ameri Americans generally save very little money. So our savings rate is very low relative to other industrialized countries. So yeah, and I think real wages have gone down in the last 40 years. So people aren't, the net, uh, in other words, uh, the, the, the bottom line is that Americans are less wealthy than they were 40 years ago, 50 years ago. So then these budget brands tend to, their, their sales go up. He works a bad job. He earns $15 an hour. He hates it. I'm guessing you make more than that. Well, no, not necessarily. I don't necessarily make too much money. I just was able to to balance it right. I was able to buy a house for cheap and pay it off 12 years ago. See, you, when you have no house note for 12 years, you can, you, you'll end up having a lot more disposable income, you understand? So that's a big part of people's expense, their housing. So when you don't have a house note, you can make a lot less money, but the net result is you'll have more. You can you have a lot more money than people that might make twice as much as you are, three times as much. Because a lot of people, uh, they, I watch their spending habits. They're incredible. They they drink coffee from Starbucks all, all the time, all week. You know, they could spend three dollars a week on coffee. They spend fifty dollars a week. Yeah, I'm sorry about that situation with your wife being sick. Uh, those things can really be expensive. I'm not saying it's not tough. You know, those things can be tough. But the whole point is that these these budget brands are very profitable because there are so many people that have to pay budget. Oh, would everybody like to go out and buy 10 rows of special edition age 12 years for $95 a bottle? Yeah, I'm sure they would. Are they going to? No, they're not. <laughs> Why do you think Ford Focus and Chevrolet Cruze is a popular car? Two popular vehicles. Well, because that's what people can afford. And they're kind of durable, you know, so you can keep it for 10 years, maybe longer if you use your brain. Uh, and, you you know, you luck out, don't get in the wreck or whatever. All right, so um, <laughs> I shouldn't say luck if you're blessed, you know. All right, so uh, I wasn't going to do this this morning. I thought I was going to go to church this morning at 7, which means I'd have been at the church right now. But as it turns out, I ended up going to Mass at 4 o'clock yesterday in New Orleans. I'd never been there before. I'm trying to go to every church in the city. <clears throat> I went to St. Mary of the Angels, the new building, which was built in 1966 after Hurricane Betsy destroyed the original building. St. Mary of the Angels, beautiful church. Like I went inside, I was like, wow, yeah. you know, I was so impressed. Right there on North Miro Street, named after Governor Miro, the Spanish governor, one of the Spanish governors of New Orleans, uh, in the Upper Ninth Ward section of the city. Oh, yeah, I was really impressed with that church. Boy, let me tell you, it looked like a real family unit, you know, like they're real close. That's a real close-knit neighborhood anyway, that Ninth Ward neighborhood tends to be. Now, if you go to the Bywater section of the Ninth Ward, it's not so close-knit because it's mostly like, more like transient, white, young, white, hipster, transient. You know what I mean? Like they're all in their 20-something and they, uh, they ten tend to have a higher education level but they're coming in from other states like New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, California, Oregon, Montana, but probably more like Oregon, Washington, Texas. And they go down there and they live for a while and they're grooving with the scene. 
But you know how that goes. They don't stay. They just, they're here today, gone tomorrow. Even I have relatives that did the same thing, same lifestyle. So they tend not, they tend to be very, um, there's a lot of turnover in that area, Bywater. But if you go to the lower ninth ward, generally, or the upper, that area north of St. Claude Avenue, then you have more people that they just live there. They're not, they're not making the scene. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, so that's that. But yeah, if I could buy Booker's all the time, I definitely would. Says Andrew, ninety dollars a bottle. Yeah. Even if I had that kind of money, I don't think I would pay that much. I just I got a problem with that. <laughs> got a problem with that. Conspicuous consumption, uh, whatever you want to call it. All right. Well, so thank you, viewers, here at this Dawn Busters. Now, look. Uh, see that light, that daylight? Uh, I think it's time to go for a walk. <laughs> I'll try to walk a mile and a half today. Well, I got to get going. Nick. Got the New Orleans Saints game coming on at one o'clock. One o'clock Eastern time against New England. Yeah, that could be an ugly scene, right? <laughs> um, so I'll try to set up an examination in two days with uh, Evan Williams Green Label versus Jim Beam. Now, I think I'll be able to tell a Jim Beam apart from it because I think the Jim Beam is going to be more green wood and mentholated and wintergreen, but I don't think it'll be better. It'll probably be a tie in quality, but um, I think it'll be more discernible in taste. Oh, well, we'll see. All right, thanks, folks. Let's see, any last comments? Yeah, Andrew says, uh, oh, Harold and Andrew says, thanks for the stream. We'll catch you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this early morning. Dawn Busters, Andrew says, well, thanks for the show. Have a great day. Hey, y'all have a great day, too. Don't drink too much and don't uh, misbehave. <laughs> Um, be nice to everybody. Um, yeah, I'm only going to drink four beers today. So we're talking about 48 ounces. You know, 48 ounces of beer in a whole day. Nah, that's not a lot. And I don't like to drink strong beers. Anything over 6% turns me off. And if I'm weak, then I'm weak. Too bad for me. I like it, though. All right. Thanks, folks. And we are out of here. <laughs>